Now we're also keeping a close eye on Bali tonight, where Mount Agung is threatening to blow. It's technically already erupting, spewing volcanic ash thousands of meters into the air. But with what locals are calling rays of fire seeping out, they're worried it could explode. 100,000 people near that volcano have been told to get out. Some wind up in makeshift shelters like this one, but others are staying put, refusing to leave their homes. There are Canadians there too, many of them stranded because flights off the island have all been canceled. One friend that we have here is getting on a bus at 6 a.m. He's going to drive 18 hours, apparently through a jungle. There's a swamp. There's some sort of canoe or a boat that's going to take him to an island where, you know, there might be an airport that might still be open. At this point, you're trying to figure out what the right thing to do is. Do you, do you sit tight and hope that, you know, the worst of it is over? Or is it actually going to erupt and we should get the heck out of here as soon as possible? Now, worth noting here, volcanoes come in lots of different shapes and sizes. And turns out this one is particularly dangerous. We asked our own seismologist and scientist, Johanna Wagstaff, to tell us why. Mount Agung is a stratovolcano, meaning it's cone-shaped. Those can produce the most violent explosions. Imagine all of the magma deep within is heating up water and creating pressure that's building towards a small point at the top of the volcano. Its steep slopes can send lava rushing down the mountainside at high speeds. And we know how deadly that is because we've seen it before. The last time this volcano blew was in 1963. More than a thousand people died, most of them because of the blast and lava. The other danger is mud flows. When the earth shakes, so much can break loose. And with all that rock and debris spewing out, rain can turn that into fast-flowing rivers, destroying everything in its path. And Johanna's here to tell us more about the impact. Because, Joe, how wide of an area are we actually talking here that's under direct threat from that volcano? Well, Andrew, the evacuation radius is about 12 kilometers from the volcano. That's based on topography, as well as the ash cloud that is a threat to planes. Not everyone in the evacuation zone, though, has left. Uh, some people are just wearing masks and hope, for, and hope that when an eruption does happen, they can make it out in time. And is it a foregone conclusion that the volcano will erupt in a giant explosion? Not necessarily. Uh, there is a scenario where the gas may just release uh, gradually over a longer period of time. So scientists are watching signs and clues very closely. One of them is earthquakes. We can tell that the magma is getting closer to the surface based on earthquake activity. We're also monitoring and measuring the temperature of the gases that are being released to see, again, if that magma is getting closer to the surface. Uh, so all signs are pointing towards a major eruption, even though it isn't a done deal. But these are all the same clues we had before the 1963 eruption, Andrew. Okay, Johanna Wagstaff, thanks so much. You're welcome.